Hello YouTube, this is Michael B. The Game Genie, and this is a quick video response to AT1138's Top 3 Tuesday, featuring RPG Machine 86. Top 3 Arcade Cabinet Art that drew you in and made you want to play. So guys, I'm going to be very honest about this. Uh, I'm really sorry this is going to be a very quick video. I'm really short on time this week. I was at the office till 10.30 tonight. Working. I don't have a lot of time, but I had to do a video response to RPG Machine 86, who's a great guy. So, here we go. Um, as a kid growing up, uh, you might not believe this, but I was actually really shy. And uh, I think I'm over it right now, but still a little bit shy and anyways when I was a kid I didn't go in the arcade very often we only actually had one arcade well two arcades here in uh, St. John's and surrounding areas in Newfoundland there was also one in Mount Pearl and it was always packed and I was such a shy kid like I would never play an arcade game with somebody else I always had to play by myself so it's very rare I actually played but there's a few games I absolutely had to and sometimes I'd even get over my fear and play them uh, the first is one that RPG Machine 86 mentioned, and that is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the Arcade Game. Uh, Turtles the Arcade Game was just amazing. I was a huge fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles growing up, and especially the art. Uh, I'm not much of an artist, but growing up I really liked to draw, and I used to make my own Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comics. I just loved the way they were drew. And uh, I was a little disappointed when I saw the arcade cabinet because a lot of it is live action. But the thing that drew me in is, man oh man, was the April O'Neil actress that they had on the side of that cabinet absolutely beautiful. I love the Turtles logo, and I just love the look of the entire cabinet. It was just so exciting, I had to try it out. Second in this is going to be a bit of a strange one because it's actually not a lot of Earth, but it's actually WWF Superstars in the arcade. And growing up, I was a huge wrestling fan, still am today. And as soon as I saw this, I saw it advertised first in a magazine, might have been Electronic Gaming Monthly, I said, wow, that just looks amazing. And uh, basically, there's not a lot of actually drawn art, but just the way the WWF logo looks and Superstars logo, and around the actual screen of the arcade machine itself, you can see all the wrestlers actually featured directly right there on the screen. And then on the side, they've got this really cool thing done where they've got the pictures of the wrestlers again, and they've got kind of stars shooting up, and it's just absolutely beautiful. So, WWF Superstars, as soon as I saw it, I had to play it. And lucky for me, with my uh, fear of going to the arcades, there was a bowling alley up behind my house, and they only had like two arcade machines. But luckily enough, WWF Superstars was one that was there. That's another thing I'll go into really quickly. Uh, I think id T1138 mentioned this. A lot of times in the arcades, the machines were kind of like packed close together, and all you really got to see was the front. But WWF Superstars, where it was one of the only arcade machines in the bowling alley, I could actually see the side, and I just love the look of it. Uh, there's not a whole lot uh, when it comes to art. There's definitely more colorful machines, but based on my love of wrestling and the way that the wrestlers were presented, it just jumped out at me and made me want to play it. So my number one overall is one again that there's not an overly large amount of art, but it's just, in my opinion, a beautiful arcade cabinet, is G.I. Joe the Arcade Game. Uh, I'm a huge fan of G.I. Joe, it's my favorite cartoon of all time, and I'm actually a huge fan of the comic as well, and even some of the newer comics, and if you take a look at the G.I. Joe arcade machine, uh, right across the banner is your straight G.I. Joe logo, which I'm, I don't know, it's aesthetically pleasing to me, I look at it and it just beams happiness to me, I, I'm drawn towards it, I want to play it. But also on top of that, on the side, there's some really, really cool pictures of the characters you actually get to play in the game, and then Cobra Commander kind of dominating the world. And it's done in this really, really cool uh, artistic style that's a cross between the uh, art that was used for the actual G.I. Joe uh, toy boxes and some of the comic book ad adaptations at the time. So G.I. Joe, as soon as I saw it, I had to play it, and it's one of these multiplayer games, so... Again, I had to get over my fear and jump in a lot of times with three other people to play. 
So anyways, this is Michael B. The Game Genie. Uh, just doing a quick video response. Id 1138, Stop 3 Tuesday. Uh, RPG Machine 86. Uh, I've watched a couple of your videos, but it's one of those things where I just never subscribed before. But I subscribed this week, and I'm looking forward to getting to know more about you. Alright guys, I <laughs> hope you enjoy the video, and I'll talk to you next time.